First Chronicles chapter 20. And it came to pass, it's one continuous story, that after the year was expired, at the time that kings go out to battle. So there must have been a time, according to this passage, another passage we'll look at. All right, time on the calendar, everyone go to war. Is that a wicked man is? That's not God. That's not God saying, David, go get these people, go kill these sinners for the people of Israel. They had a set time on the calendars, build up your troops, and we're going to battle it out. If we went to heaven on our own accord, if we were to go by our own works, the Bible says, not of works least any man boast. What does that verse mean? We get to heaven, we get a group of people. Oh, look how good we are. Well, no, look how good we are. No, we're better than you guys. We, we had the church of the most people that of, the, of our town got saved. Well, we had the most church that people were baptized. And then you'll be having wars. But when we get the glory about Jesus Christ and only about Jesus Christ, you won't have wars no more. And James gives us, you war, you fight amongst yourself because you have not, because you ask not. This is not even having or asking. This is, okay, let's go to war. Okay. It's ridiculous. But notice it says kings go to battle. There's a time when the rulers of the nation went to battle. They didn't send their people. When you get these world, these wars today, World War II, Adolf Hitler was not on the battlefield. The president does not go on the battlefield, and if he were to go on the battlefield, it would be a big secret, be quiet, and the troops would be amazed. Here's the president. You don't see the, the, the president or the, the queen of England out there battling. I'll give one thing over England. Again, it, it's probably not to a full as a battle. At least her grandchildren, her sons are in the military. They're protected. But they've been on the battlefront. One of them, uh, the princes there is in helicopter patrol. He'd go out there and get people who, who were wounded. The queen herself was in the military. The queen, yeah, the queen herself was in the military. She was a nurse during World War I. Now, probably her. She played the first battle ever in the Bible. Genesis was, that woman's old. But the kings would go out to battle and there was this, okay, it's time. Joab this is David's military leader. The President of the United States is called uh, uh, the Commander-in-Chief. Joab is the Commander-in-Chief. He's not President. Joab is in charge of all the forces. He's the big honcho. He's the one that would sit in the Pentagon. But he doesn't sit in the Pentagon. He gets on his horse and he goes fights with his troops. Let forth the power of the army. And wasted the country of the children of Ammon. It's on the side of Jordan, that's the children of Lot, and came and besieged Reba. Now, Reba is a royal city we're going to see in a moment, and it's a city of waters. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Joab smote Reba and destroyed it. And David took the crown off their king from off his head. Now, it doesn't say if they killed the king or the king. David goes up to this king and says, Thank you, it's mine. Whether dead or alive, not recorded. David's been king of Israel, and now he finally gets a crown. Do you not see Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ not the king of the Jews? Written by Pilate? But has he been crowned yet? Absolutely not. He had the title above his head upon the cross that he suffered and died for our sin. It said, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. He's a king right now, but he hasn't been crowned. He doesn't get crowned to Revelation chapter 19, and he has crowns. Those horses of the apocalypse, they call it, I think it was Revelation chapter 5. That, that devil that's on that white horse, the Antichrist, and he's got a crown before Jesus Christ gets a crown. Queens and kings of all nations, both past, present, and yet future, will have crowns of their royal authority. Yet Jesus Christ is king like David, but he doesn't get a crown until later on. That's the type of Jesus Christ. 
and he's not going to take the he's not going to take the crown, Jesus, off a dead man's head. I believe, and this can be wrong, but the Bible says many crowns, and there's the crown of righteousness, the, the crown of rejoicing, and there's five crowns all together. I believe, and you don't have to believe, but when the judgment seat is finished, Jesus Christ will step up. And we will look at all his works, which are done perfect and righteous without sin. One hundred. He's going to get all the crowns, all five of them, if not our crowns. We're going to, I believe, as his bride, we're going to crown him one day with all five of those crowns. He's worthy. And found it to weigh a talent of gold. And there were precious stones in it. Notice the gold, notice the precious stones. That's the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ with silver. If the fire, and you got gold, silver, or precious stones, you're going to get a crown. You're going to get a right to reign. And there were precious stones in it. And it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceedingly much spoil out of the city. So everything ruling. Gold, silver, animals, women, food. Whatever they could find. That's what spoil means. And he brought out the people that were in it. And this is going to be important. That we're going to look at another verse. And cut them. The other verse we're going to look at will say, put them under. With saws. And with harrows of iron. And with axes. It looks like David's executing these people. We don't want their sin to grow. These men are worthy of death for the wickedness that they're done. Is not Jesus Christ going to be crowned? Is he not going to come? Is he not going to execute people with that flame of fire coming out of his mouth? Do you not see the second advent, what we're reading here? Is it interesting? You say that's wicked and vile. What are you going to do? These people amongst the Oriental people, the Middle Eastern and the Orient people are the kind of people that if you were to kill the guy's father, all right, what, that child is going to grow up with full revenge and get full muscular. He's going to get full of battle. He's going to get everything he can to revenge his father upon the person that killed him. Over the family deity of the family rights, I've got to stand for my dead father and the one that killed him. You would raise all these people up so they would try to come back and kill you. They're the enemy. They lost. America, when, when we won World War II and Japan finally said, that's it, we're done. Those bombs were enough. We went over there and, and built up Japan for them. Japan never gave us no money. We helped the enemies. And now we send money of our goods and all that, of our market to Japan, to China. And we don't have no money here on the, the home front. Our jobs are going to the enemies. They didn't lose the World War II. They actually won. David says the enemies are dead. Even so dwelt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon, execution, took no hostages, and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Now, what's missing? We're going to stop right there as far as this passage. But what's missing? Something is missing. 2 Samuel 11. Something's missing. 2 Samuel 11, 1. Kind of weird. But what we just read, 2 Samuel 11, 1. And it came to pass, okay, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle. That, that's exactly what we just read. That David sent Joab, okay, and his servants with him, with all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, that's what we read, and besieged Rebbe. There's the same city, there it is. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Uh oh, wait a minute. I didn't read about that. What, what's going on here? 
And it came to pass in even time that David rose from off his bed. Wait, I didn't read about that. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. So while we're reading and studying 1 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Samuel 11 says David wasn't there. We have gone forth, the king's going to battle against Joab. Gone to battle. And we're missing something. And he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent, inquired a woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers, took her, and she came into him, and lay with her, and for she was purified of her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, said, I am with child. Wow, this is this is all missing. Adultery. And David said to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto David, they, uh, demanded of him how the Joab did. And how the people did and how the war prospered. There's a war going on. David's not there. David said, go to, David said to Uriah, Go down unto thy house, wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and had followed him a mess of meat from the king. Okay, mess, mess. That's why it's called a mess hall. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house and all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. When they told David, said, Uriah went not down to his house, David said to Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then dost thou not go into thy house? And Uriah said to David, The ark of Israel, Judah by his intent, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped upon the open fields. Shall I go to, unto my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? That's what he wanted. As thou livest, as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said, Uriah, tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will also let thee depart. So Uriah abode, abode in Jerusalem that day and on the morrow. And when David called him, he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk. And at even time, he went out to lie in his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. Now David's got him drunk. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront, the hottest battle, the strongest battle, and retire ye from him, and he may be smite and die. Death orders. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew that the valiant men were. The men of the city went out and fought against Joab, and there some and there fell some of the people, the Israelites, the, the servants of David, Uriah the Hittite also. So Uriah is killed in battle. David is not there. We we kind of missed that. And in chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, uh, I didn't mark this one. Let me find it real quick. It's important. Uh, uh, okay. Amen. Look at uh, 2 Samuel 12, 9. This is not recorded. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, okay? And hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. There we are in, in Chronicles. Wow, we didn't get that. So while we're reading the battle of, of the Ammonites of Joab, and we get the fact is, here comes, you know, the battle. We got a problem. While this battle is going on, David is not there. While the battle is going on, David takes another man's wife. That's not recorded in Chronicle. While the battle is going on, David sends to Joab and says, hey, bring me Uriah. That's not recorded in Chronicle. 
David tries to get Uriah to go down with his wife to sleep with his wife so the pregnancy will look like it's Uriah. That doesn't happen. And we don't read that David sends a letter to Joab while there's two fight in Ammon. Here's this letter. I want Uriah dead. Use the children of Ammon that we're just reading about in Chronicles. Now let's pick up 2 Samuel 12, verse 26. <coughs> Let's pick up in First Chronicles that what we what we didn't read. In Second Samuel, twelve twenty six, Joab fought against Rimna, the children of Ammon. There it is, and took the royal city. And Joab sent message to David, and said, "I have fought against Rimna, and I've taken the city of the waters." First Chronicles. Now therefore, gather the rest of the people together and camp against the city and take it. At least I take the city, and it be called after my name. David's not there in part of First Chronicles. There has been orders sent to Joab. Bring me Uriah. Uriah comes back to Joab. I got a letter for you, Joab. I want this man dead. Joab sends another letter back to David. You better get, get over here right now. We're going to win this battle. And if we're going to win this battle, they're going to call this city after me, Joab, and not you, Mr. King. Look what's always happened. And David gathered all the people together and went to Ribna. So here comes David into Ribna and fought against it and took it. And so we're not out of contact. And he took their king's crown from off. There it is. Chronicles 20. Off his head, it weighed thereof a town of gold with the precious stones. It was set on David's head, and he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. Man, some preachers would not want to read First Chronicles because they did not read what we just read in Second Samuel. Why would God leave all that out? And he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws, under harrows of iron, under axes of iron, it made them pass through the brick kiln. That wasn't in Chronicles. So he's executed, and thus did he all the cities of children name it. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. What's going on here? Matthew 1. Matthew chapter 1. And we'll pick up Verse 6, Matthew 1, 6. And Jesse begat David, there he is, the king, there he is. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Wow, look at that. Well, so why do we come to Chronicles and we get the same story, but a whole thing is missing? I'll tell you why, because David repented of his sins. He truly re uh, repented of his heart. And God said, okay, I forgive you. How's that? And when it comes to Chronicles, the, the writer of Chronicles, you don't need to write that. How's that? Isn't God a merciful God even in the Old Testament? Murder and adultery was a sin that could not bring a lamb, a goat, a cattle, a bram, or anything. David repented of his heart. He had the shirt mercies of God and his son Solomon. And when we read of Matthew, the line of Jesus... That was the wife of Urias, but now she's the wife of David, and we brought forth Solomon, and here he is. And when the story is retold again, David's sin is not mentioned. Why? Because David confessed, David repented, David sought a pardon, and God said, okay, it's gone. How's that for a wonderful God? 